Hi everyone, welcome to the Master of Data Science online orientation video. The purpose of this video is to walk you through some of the important information that you'll need to be able to successfully navigate your way all the way to completion and earning your master's degree in data science. But before we get into the details, I want to take a moment to introduce both myself and my team. My name is Dr. Eric Bush. I am the director of the Master of Data Science Online here at UT. My job is to work with faculty and uh, with staff to uh, direct the program and to advocate for both the program and for our students at the department and at the university level. I also want to take this opportunity to introduce Maria Fernanda Palomares Caranco, who is our admissions coordinator. Many of you have probably corresponded with her at some point over the last couple of months leading up to your admission. Tim? Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Schriever, and I'm the graduate program coordinator for the online programs team. I will be a main point of contact for you during your time in the program. I will be able to assist you with many processes, such as registering for courses, if you need to queue drop a course or withdraw from the semester, if you need any assistance applying to graduate, and many others. We are excited to have you join our program, and we look forward to the upcoming semester. Catherine? Thanks, Tim. My name is Catherine Murphy, and I am the assistant director for the online program team. While I can also assist you with many of the things that Tim mentioned, such as withdrawals or regular general student inquiries, I will also be your main point of contact for any financial concerns that you may have about this, your time here in the program. So if you need help making a payment or you have any questions about how to get your employer to pay for tuition, please feel free to reach out to me. As Tim said, we're really excited that you're here and we look forward to helping you pursue your degree. Let's talk a little bit about program academics for the MSDS program. In order to complete the degree, you must take 30 hours of coursework. This includes nine hours of foundational courses. The foundational courses include probability and simulation-based inference, foundations of regression, and data structures. And then you must also uh, take 21 hours of additional degree courses, which could include anything from advanced predictive models for complex data to design principles and causal inference for data-based decision-making. And there are a number of other courses as well. So the grade requirements are different depending on whether you're enrolled in a foundational course or an additional degree course. For foundational courses, you must earn a B minus or higher in order for it to count toward your program of work. In additional degree courses, you must earn a C or higher in order for it to be able to count toward your program of work. That said, it is important to keep your grade well above the 3.0 threshold because if your cumulative GPA dips below that threshold, you will be on probation, uh, academic probation you must maintain at least an average of 3.0 in order to be able to graduate. If your GPA falls below the 3.0 threshold, you will have one semester in order to be able to raise it above that threshold or risk termination from the program. Program expectations. We'll start out by talking about course structure. Our program follows the University of Texas at Austin's academic calendar. Be sure to check out the main UT website uh, for more details about what the semesters will look like, when the holidays and breaks are, etc. It's important to note that this program is an instructor-paced, asynchronous program that allows students to work on their own schedules while still keeping up with and meeting deadlines. Your course materials will be released on a weekly basis, and while you'll have plenty of flexibility when, when it comes to when you choose to work on them, on, on your assignments, and where you do your work, it is important to keep up with your coursework because each week builds on the week before it. To ensure maximum flexibility, all of your lectures will be pre-recorded. In terms of time commitment, your workload expectation is as follows. These courses are demanding. They're as demanding as traditional on-campus graduate courses would be. And it is recommended that you find several times during your regular week to set aside for your coursework. Anticipate spending between eight to 12 hours for each course that you take each week to watch the lectures, to read the materials, 
and to complete the assignments. Finally, academic integrity. Academic integrity is one of the most important values that we hold as part of this program. And we expect our students to maintain absolute academic integrity and a high standard of individual honor as they, take, as they undertake scholastic work here at the University of Texas at Austin. What does this mean? This means acknowledging the scholastic efforts of others that you may use in your work materials, completing assignments independently, unless you've been instructed otherwise, and finally, following instructions for assignments and exams that avoid all forms of academic dishonesty. For more information about the academic um, codes at the University of Texas at Austin, uh, please go to the Dean of Students website at the URL listed on the slide for more information. Hello everyone. In this section, I will be going over the course registration process. Students in our program will use the UT registration system to register for courses every semester. Before a student can register, all registration bars must be cleared. Students can view the registration bars on the registration information sheet, or the RIS page, before registering for courses. Some registration bars may repeat each semester or year, so we encourage you to view your IRS page before each registration period. A common registration bar for new students is the GEC bar. All official transcripts and documents must be received and processed by GEC before that bar is cleared and you can register for courses. Once all registration bars are cleared, you will have access to the UT registration system during your assigned registration period. Our office will provide a, a detailed instructions each semester to help guide you with registering for courses. This will include information about registration periods, the courses we will be offering in the upcoming semester, and the five-digit unique number for each course. Once you have access to the UT registration system, adding a course is fairly simple. You will just select the Add option, enter the five-digit unique number for the course you wish to add, and click Submit. Once you have done that, you will see a message at the top of the screen that says you added course number to your schedule. You will also see the course listed at the bottom of the page along with any other courses you have registered for. There are a few important things for you to remember about registration. Tuition invoices will be sent out at least 24 hours after you have registered. It could also take a few days or even weeks for tuition invoices to be generated after you've registered, especially during the early registration period. All payments for our program will be made through the What.io page and you will never make a payment through the My Tuition Bill page. All students must confirm their attendance every semester through the My Tuition Bill page or they risk being dropped from their courses. Again, our students will never make a payment through the My Tuition Bill page. You just confirm attendance through it. We encourage students to review the course information and in syllabi located in the central course in edX every semester before registering for courses. The most common error when registering for a course is inputting the wrong unique number. If you try to register and you have verified that you input the unique number correctly and you still receive an error, then please contact us as soon as possible so that we can assist you. A calendar of important registration dates will be provided and communication will also be sent throughout the semester about the first class day, the add drop dates, applying for graduation, and the last class day. There are different registration periods throughout the semester and it is important to understand the different periods. The add drop period will run through the 12th class day of each semester. Students can add or drop a course through the UT registration system through the fourth class day. After that, from the fifth class day through the 12th class day, students must contact our office to add or drop a course. A course dropped during this period will not appear on the transcript and a student will receive a full refund for the course that is dropped. Please note that if a student is dropping their only course for the semester or all of their courses, this is a withdrawal and it withdrawal has a different partial refund schedule. After the 13th, or starting on the 13th class day, students will no longer be able to add a course. Students that want to drop a course during this period will have to go through the QDROP process. This requires approval from the graduate advisor and graduate dean and our office will be able to guide you through it. The course will have a queue listed next to it on your transcript and there is no refund for a course that is dropped. 
after the 20th class day, students will have to go through the QF drop, period, uh, QF drop process. This will require approval from the instructor along with the graduate advisor and graduate dean. Again, this course will have a Q listed next to it and it does not come with a refund. If you have any questions or issues with registering for courses, please contact our office. We will be more than happy to assist you with any issues that you have. Hi, let's take a moment to discuss payments. As a new student, you will have received a program deposit. This helps secure your place within the program and will be applied to your first semester's tuition. Please note that this will only be sent during your first semester, and if you have any issues with the payments, please feel free to contact me. Tuition invoices will be sent via email from myself or Tim um, every semester. As Tim mentioned, it will be at least 24 hours after you have registered. Please understand that these systems are not connected and a lot of these things are still manual process processes. So it will take me a few you know, hours or a day or two to generate those invoices for you. If you're getting antsy, no worries. Again, just feel free to contact us and we'll be able to help you. As Tim also mentioned, all payments are paid through the What I Owe page and not through the My Tuition. If you make a payment on the My Tuition page on accident, it will take several weeks to get that refund um, sent back to you. So please make sure to always make your payments on the What I Owe. And if you have a question or you see some sort of correspondence mentioning that you need to make a payment on the My Tuition, please feel free to contact us to verify if it's correct or not. It's also important to understand that fee invoices will typically be sent after the 12th class day. As I mentioned earlier, not all of the systems are connected and some of these are manual processes, so I need time to register I need time to process your fee invoices. So again, they're going to be sent out after the 12th class day. One thing to note is that all international students will incur a $125 ISSS fee. This comes directly from the University of Texas and um, we invoice it to you, as I mentioned earlier, after the 12th class day. So as a department, we're collecting the money, but it does not come to us or used for our program. One thing we do wanna mention is that international students on a certain visa will be automatically enrolled in student health insurance. This is, comes from the University of Texas. They're following certain state legislative rules that we, um, again, as a department, are not in charge of, but we do help administer the payments for this. You will have an opportunity to waive this fee if you fit certain criteria. You will be prompted by both us and the international office to complete that waiver. If you have any questions, feel free to email the alias that you've been corresponding with and we can better assist you. Your invoice will detail how to make payments for your tuition and for your fees. If you need guidance on where to send a check, how to make a payment, electronically with your credit card. You might be able to do certain wire transfer information or there will be instructions on how to get your employer to help pay for your tuition if that is an option for you. If you need certain documentation from us to assist you in any way, please feel free to contact us. We can help whether it's with your employer, your veterans office for um, TA assistance, etc. Just make sure to do it right away so that we have time to process it. It takes several offices to be able to make sure that all payments go through when you are doing something like that. So again, just email, email us. Refunds, this is important. There are times during the registration process where you might receive a refund. Please understand that it will take anywhere from seven to 15 days for the various offices on campus to process these. So once we send you a notification that we have processed it, it's from that point in time that it might take seven to 15 days. We will notify you that we've processed these. And um, just so you know, for these to be processed, you will need to have a US-based address or you'll need to have a US-based bank account. If you do not have either of these, that is okay. You just need to let me know so that way I can contact student accounts receivable and let them know that we need to process your refund differently. Every semester we will send you a receipt. Please understand that this is a manual process and I will not be able to get them to you until mid-semester. If you need something more specific than what I give you, just let us know and we'll be able to create a new one for you. Again, if you have any questions or need anything, just feel free to contact us at the alias. Let's talk a little bit about the materials that you'll need for your courses. First and foremost, you will need a laptop or a personal computer. 
Also, you will need a stable and a reliable internet connection. Scanners or phones will be helpful in order to be able to convert pictures and to create PDFs, which might be necessary for individual homework assignments. You will also need something like a smartphone or another device that is capable of being used for dual factor authentication, which is utilized by the University of Texas at Austin for computer security. And finally, you may need a webcam and a microphone um, as requirements for proctoring, which may happen in some of your courses. Platforms. So as far as platforms, the most important one that we use is the learning management system edX. edX is the location of your program's central course, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. It is also where you will locate all of your course material uh, for your program. You will log into edX using the student portal on edX with your UT EID, not um, an edX uh, credential. The student portal will contain your class information, your assignments, your syllabi, contact information for your instructors and your TAs, and finally, whatever program documents are additional program documents may be necessary for the completion of your course. Again, do not create your own edX account. More information will be provided at the beginning of the semester to help ensure that you have access to edX. Let's talk a little bit about the central course. The central course is a course in edX similar to the other courses that you may take, but the central course is the headquarters for the program. It is a course in edX that it is created for you to be able to navigate all of the important information about your program. It includes all your semester correspondence, all your points of contact, program information, course information, guidelines for enrollment and registration, and finally, links to the student handbook and to the program of work. So in order to be able to access the central course, you have to be uh, connected to edX first. And more information, most of the information about your program can be found here. We do ask that before you contact our program to ask questions, that you take a moment to go to your central course and see if you can answer your question there. You will also be required to use some additional tools uh, during your time as a student in our program. These may include Codio, Piazza, which is our online discussion platform. Some courses use Google Collaboratory and some courses use Proctorio or other types of academic integrity uh, software. That concludes the orientation video for the MSDS program. If you have any additional questions, start by visiting our central course FAQ at the URL listed in the top bullet. If you still have questions after that, feel free to email us with your UTEID at the email listed on the slide. Be sure to pay attention to the inbox of the email that is on file with us because we will be sending you additional information throughout the semester. It's very important to read all of the emails sent out by the program, uh, including, th these include important university dates, updates to the student handbook, and when the time comes, graduation information. We are really excited to have you as part of the MSDS program and are excited to work with you in the months and the years to come.